your life. And he's saying many of us have forfeited his promise because we didn't feel it. And I'm coming to shake you out of complacency tonight. First night of the encounter night at VU conference, you're going to remember that what you are dealing with right now is not too big for our God. What you are dealing with right now is not taking God by surprise. It may have been allowed to allow you to come on the scene. You missed it. It may have been allowed for you to come onto the scene. What if you are the answer to the problem but the enemy has tricked us that you gotta feel it somebody asked me one time how, how will you know that that the, the, the woman you want to marry she's the one and somebody said you'll know it you'll know it when you feel it uh-uh no 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 because your feelings can lie to you there have been some booties I've chased that wasn't it oh yeah they are oh they want me to be fake in here chat I felt <laughs> I, f I felt like it was it I felt like that was the job I felt like that was the business <sighs> but what do you know what has God said about it and tonight in this place I, I just feel this super strong rich I'm supposed to anchor everybody in this conference I want to anchor you back to the thing that no matter what political party you associate with, no matter what happens in the next election, no matter who else passes or is killed or who else, whatever video comes out tomorrow, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have an anchor. And we have an anchor that is sure. We have an anchor that is steady. We have an anchor that is here. Even if it's a new normal, we serve the same God. We serve the same God. Okay. All right. Let me get to, let me get to, <laughs> and I know it's hard because a lot of people in this season up until this point have been doing what's right and they haven't been seeing the results. And that's a hard, that's a hard place to be at when you do what's right and you don't see the results. But one thing I've learned about getting stronger is that if you focus on the results, you'll stop doing what's right. <laughs> okay. Um, um, at the beginning of um, last year, I, I, I got up and I told the testimony um, called Crazy Faith about how God gave us this building, this arena, basically. And, um, and I was up there and I got the keys, the keys, the keys. And I, I looked at this uh, moment in my life and I wish I had a picture with me today. But at that moment, I was saying, I got the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys. I was 254 pounds. And for me, that was the unhealthiest I've ever been in my whole life. At a moment of celebration, I was saying, I got the keys, the keys. And what I really had was the belly, belly, belly. And, and, and I was sitting in that moment and I looked back at that moment and I said, I will never be that unhealthy and out of shape again in my life. And so I made a decision. I made a resolve that I'm going to get healthy. In that moment that I made the resolve, the thought process was, I'm going to go to the gym this week, drink a gallon of water every day this week, and then I'm going to see results this week. But anybody who's ever been on a journey like this is that your resolve has to be greater than the results. Because when you get into that moment and I'm going to the gym and all I'm eating is kale and all I'm eating is this crap. that don't, Why don't nothing taste good that's good for you? Anyway, that's going to be a conversation between me and God when I get to heaven. But all I'm saying to you is like I was looking for results that were bigger than my resolve. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but some of us have not been getting stronger and we've taken our focus off of God and what he's called us to because we're focused on results. I would go to the gym. I remember I told my wife, every night I'm doing 50 push-ups. And I would be I'd say like, oh, baby, God, you can't do it. <laughs> and I was sitting there because before this, two years ago, I couldn't do 10 push-ups by myself. And I'm, I'm just admitting that to you because some of y'all just need to start. Glory to God. And so I would get down and I'd be like, let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And I'd be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Somebody help me. Seven. Hey! Hey! Ah! I love it. Rich. Rich. I'm looking for results. 
I just did 10 in front of everybody. I just posted a scripture in front of everybody. I just said a prayer in front of everybody. I just didn't have sex with that person for the first time in six years. And so I've, I have, a, I have, Come I on, did preach. something, Come on. Preach. but am I resolved wow. over my result? Come on. Come on. Do, does that mean I got to keep doing it? Does that mean I'm going to have to be consistent in this? I'm talking to somebody right now. If you're going to get what God has for you and you're not going to move in feelings, your resolve has to be greater than results. I'm trying to practically help somebody get unstuck right now and get back to the anchor. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? I need everybody to understand that this is the season. Though your feelings are real, your resolve has to be stronger. Are you resolved to walk in love? I'm black and you see what they did to us and you da, 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 da. Oh yeah, we're going to do everything. But am I resolved to look like Christ? Am I resolved that in all of my activism, am I resolved in all of the things, all the reform and all the marches and everything else? Am I resolved to have people come to me and they'll know him because of my love? It's, it's easy to say when you're not in a fire. It's easy to say you'll trust God until they throw you in there and turn it up. And right now I've been in my feelings because I forgot who the anchor was. And today I, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But, but I'm coming, this is a raw message because I had to, I'm living this right now. I'm, I'm having to live it. And God spoke to me. He said so clearly, he said, Michael, he said, if your resolve is me, I'll always take care of the results. Some of us have been trying our hardest to work in careers and <laughs> to strive in areas, to get noticed, to network, to do all of these things. And God said, if your resolve is me, I'll always take care of the results. It's time for you to get stronger. And I begin to think about this um, in, 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 my, in my own life, but then in the life of a character named Gideon in the Bible. And many of you know the story of Gideon, but Gideon's resolve had to become greater than the results at some point in his journey. Because if you look at his life, he was always at a disadvantage. Like many of us in the room, if we think about it and go around the room, all of us could point out a disadvantage we may have in whatever area God's called us to. I'm the pastor, the lead pastor of a church that's affecting a lot of people. I have a six-month high-quality Tulsa Community College education. I had a C in nutrition. <laughs> I don't have the qualifications by man's standards to do what God's called me to do. And if we go down the list, all of us would have something that the enemy has tried to use to keep us from what God has called us to. But we're going to have to get to a place where we are resolved in what God is saying, even if we're not seeing the results. I want you to say this in the chat. I know it when I don't feel it. I know it when I don't feel it. Somebody say it in the room. I know it when I don't feel it. I don't feel qualified to be up here, but I know I'm called. I don't feel equipped as a husband someday, but I know I committed to her. I don't feel like I'm righteous, but I know because of what Jesus Christ did on the Christ. I know it even when I don't feel it. I'm trying to help somebody because a lot of you are like, oh, that's great, Pastor Mike, but tomorrow you're not going to do something because you don't feel it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying it seems very basic. It seems very, but right now, when every time you open up Instagram, somebody can sway your feelings. When, when you get one phone call or they let you off your job or the plan doesn't happen, your feelings begin. I want you to know what you know. And what I know is that God has a plan even at the worst place. God has a plan even in the pit. God has a plan even when I'm broke and I'm frustrated and I don't feel it. I know it 
even when I don't <laughs> feel it. Okay, let me, let me go to the Bible because some of y'all right now are like, okay, give me some word, Pastor Mike. Okay, Judges 16, verse 11. It said, then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree of Ophrah, not Oprah, but Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abazar. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the wine press. Can I stop here? Cause I really want to preach this, but I really can't. He was doing the right thing in the wrong place. He, he was scared of the Midianite army that was coming against him and had oppressed him and done all of this stuff to him. So he was doing the right thing, but he was doing it at the bottom of a wine press. You're not even supposed to be down there doing that because how you actually get threshing of wheat is you need the wind. And so they would throw this stuff up and the wind would take off everything that wasn't actual wheat. So he was in the wrong place doing the right thing. And, and, and I got to stop here because I just feel by the spirit, there are many people that are frustrated at this very moment that are on this Zoom and watching on YouTube because you've been doing the right thing in the wrong place. And God said, the reason you got to the wrong place is because you didn't trust my placement. So you positioned yourself in a place that looked better for what you were called to do. But God said, I put you in the place that I wanted you to be in so I could get out of you what I want to get out of you. And Gideon is in the bottom of a wine press and look at the grace of God in action. I love the grace of God. He said he was in the bottom of the wine press. He was hiding and the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and look what he called them. He didn't say dummy. He didn't say, loser. <laughs> he didn't say, you disobedient child of the most high God. Look what he calls him. Mighty hero. The grace of God is the only thing that will look at you doing the right thing at the wrong place and still call you what God says about you. <laughs> That's why you can't even imagine after you've done all the bad things that you've done that God says, I still got a call for your life and I still have a purpose for you because God is not looking to hold you to your past. He's saying, I need you for the future. And he's showing up tonight on the first night of the encounter to call somebody mighty hero, great woman of God, woman of virtue, man of valor, leader to the next generation. I'm calling you. Watch this. I'm calling you what you currently aren't walking in. That's why we have to be anchored in Christ because he's the only one that in the bottom of a pit can call us who we will be in the palace. He's the only one. And he shows up and he says, mighty hero. This is the thing I want you to write down. It's a pretty long point, but I want you to get this. Stronger is what... God was trying to call Gideon at that moment. He said, you're weak right now, but you're actually a mighty hero. Stronger is a prophetic declaration from God, but it has to be a divine decision by you. What has God called you that you haven't agreed with yet? When though you were singing, there's power when you agree with me. There's power when God says amen and you say amen back and so be it. It's, it's, it's what God has called us to do and God has called us to be that we still arguing with him about it. Why are you still arguing with him about if you're supposed to be who he's already said you're supposed to be? Well, I just don't have the resources. And if I had, you know, an LED screen like this, I could minister to the nations. And if I had a wife, then maybe I could be able to do what God's called me to do. And if I had a husband, I had a confidence, you know what I'm saying, to stand up in front of anybody and tell them God is good. <laughs> Whatever your excuse is. But if God's already said it about you, why are you arguing with him? I need you to get in your mind that it's time to make a divine decision. Okay. Tonight, first night of VU conference, on the Zoom, watching on YouTube Live, I'm making a divine decision that even though I'm in a pit, even though this is the worst financial place I may have been in, even though I've been in a depression, even though I lost another child through miscarriage, even though I feel oppressed, even though they looked over me again from the job, I'm going to agree with what God says about me. If you say I'm a mighty hero, 
I'm a mighty hero. I'm making a divine decision. If you say my voice is going to the nations, my voice is going to the nations. I am going to agree with God. If you say that my family is going to be um, a blessing to other people and I've had four miscarriages, I'm going to agree with what you say about me. If you say I feel this thing so strong right now, if you say that my music is going to be the soundtrack of freedom for people, I'm going to agree with what you you say about me. Somebody needs to make a divine decision. <laughs> See, you got to remember the word of God never consults your feelings. The word of God, when, when he spoke over you, Rich, from a young, I mean, third generation of, of doing this, of bringing people and bringing um, people the gospel and, and doing it on a, a cutting edge level. And I'm looking all around and I'm thinking about like, this is cutting edge for you, but your dad was doing things that was cutting edge for him. And, and before him, your grandma, like I think about all of those things. And when you were born, God didn't say, okay, let's see how Rich feels about this. Let's see if he's willing to get in uncomfortable situations to grow let, let, no, I got, a, I got a good one. In 2020, I'm going to have him prepare to be in an arena. And then COVID-19 is going to happen. And then I'm going to see if he feels like still reaching people for me. See, it didn't consult his feeling. When you get a word from God, you have to go with your faith. It doesn't say we walk by feelings and not by sight. It says we walk by faith. That means it won't all be there. That means it's not going to be fully laid out. Either God's going to show me the mountaintop and not the path, or he's going to show me the path and not the mountaintop. He will not do anything that he is not included in. So when you are becoming to your resolve, you have to know it's going to take faith. And what, what, what Gideon did was what most of us did. Hey, I heard you say a mighty hero. That's cool. Angel. Wow. It's a real angel. You done came met me at the bottom of the wine press. This is all good. But Judges 16, 12, um, how, how should I be feeling right now? He said, the Lord's with you. Anything else? No, no, no. All you need to know with all of your disqualifications, with all of the things that you, the Lord is with you. But what about the plan? What? A, come on, can we please just for a second get a little more clarity about what you want to do? The Lord is with you. And I think about all the moments in my life, in my ministry, where in Christendom, we act like God's going to give us an Excel sheet of the next things that he's about to do. And what I found out is that many times the only thing that I can rely on is he's with me. What's my resolve? He's with me. How are we going to lead a church through a pandemic? He's with me. How am I, how am I going to get back up after my heart was broken like that? He's with me. How in the world, after experiencing real racism in my own home, how am I going to love people that don't look like me? He's with me. You do not have to do it on your own. He's with me. And this is the beautiful picture about whatever you're going through right now. God's saying is, please invite me into it. Please don't get out here and try to do it on your own. I want you to be connected to the resolve that I am with you. And, and this is what the Bible says in Romans 8 31. It says, if God be for us, who? I'm trying to figure out right now who can stop the plan of God over your life except you. Do you know how many people, Rich, they told me that Transformation Church would not work. They told me that I was a black pastor and there's no way that I could pastor a multi-ethnic ministry. They told me that the church was um, 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 founded on the north side of Tulsa, which one of the worst race massacres happened in 1921 and devastated the whole area. There's still not a grocery store within seven miles of where I live right now. It's a food desert. They told me there's no way white people would come over here. There's no way you could be yourself. There's no way that you could buy an arena. There's no way that you could do any of those things. We've done all of it. We've done all of it. 55% of my church is white, white. 
okay? We, 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 we paid the building off, a $54 million building. We bought it for $10.7 million in five months. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, if I would have listened to my feelings, walking into the bank with people who had the ability to say yes and no, if I would have listened to my feelings, I would be at home right now wishing for what God already promised me. Oh my God. Some of y'all are at home wishing for what God already promised you if you would get out of your feelings and walk by faith. I don't. Your resolve has to be greater than the results. Mm, Let me keep, let me keep. Judge 16, 13. I'm coming to wake somebody up right now. I don't care if we get another follower from this. For the 2,000 people who this is for, I'm here for you tonight. Because some people, they want to keep doing the same old, same old. They want to complain. They want to be ones that just worship all day and have no action. They want to be ones that stand in a place and wait for God to do something. But God will never do for you what he's given you the ability to do. And so what he's asking us to do is get from this place of our feelings so that we can walk by faith. Verse 13, um, sir, Gideon replied. This is how most of us reply. After God has called us a mighty warrior, after he said you're gonna do great things, after he's already told us that your only qualification that you need is God is with you. Um, this is Gideon and all of us. Sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? If God is good, why did George Floyd have to happen? If if, if God is really with us, why COVID-19? Why over 100,000 deaths? Why are we raising our kids in this climate? If God is really with us, why the heartbreak? Why did I lose the job? And most of us spend our time in why instead of finding out what. God is trying to do. He says, um, God's with us. Why is all this happening? And matter of fact, where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of the discrimination, out of the bondage? But now the Lord has, has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Gideon was still looking for results, even though God had called him something completely different. Let me give you a point. Never look at your situation to determine your strength. You're stronger than your situation. He was looking at him being in this place with oppression. And he was saying, if God is for us, why did all this happen? And many times we're looking at our situation that we're still working that job that pays us minimum wage, that we're still in that position where our family's not together. And we're looking at that and God's saying, that is a bad measure of the strength that's on the inside of you. (laughs) If I looked at how I felt and my current situation to see, am I strong enough to do what God called me to do? I would still be in that place right now. But what you have to do is what Gideon had to do. He has to listen to what God says next. It's okay to have the real emotion, but you can't stay there. I need to say it again. I don't want anybody to hear me say you can't have feelings. I don't want anybody to hear me say that your feelings aren't valid. But if you stay at that place, you will wallow in the (laughs) muck in the mire where the enemy gets to twist you up in all kinds of lies when God's called you higher. And I know there's some leaders on this Zoom right now that need to remember that this is a new normal, but we serve the same God. I'm not my situation. I'm not what I feel right now. I am not what's in my bank account at this current moment. There is strength on the inside of me that is stronger than what's happening. Judges 16, 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, ah, this is my favorite part. I don't have enough strength. Look what he says. Go with the strength you have. I don't have 
enough. My family, this, the money, all the other stuff. Ah, that'll be okay. Go with the strength you have. I feel weak. That's enough. I feel looked over. That'll do. Ah, somebody needs to hear me. I don't have the team or the staff. It'll be fine. Go with the strength you have. I feel that so strong. Somebody has been waiting for another level of strength and God said the level of strength you have is just enough. It doesn't matter if another gust comes. God says, I've put enough on the inside of you that what you got right now is enough to do the next thing that I've called you to do. Somebody needs to give God praise for the strength you have right now. I could work this point for a hundred minutes right now because somebody has been complaining that if they get that, then I'll move. When this happens, and God is saying to everybody tonight, with all the injustice, with, with all the hurt, with all the pain, with all the frustration, God is coming to your low place. He's saying, mighty warrior, I need you. All your complaints don't work here because I've given you enough to go with what you have. It doesn't matter what they have. You have enough in you. <laughs> it doesn't matter what they did. You have enough in you to go with the strength you have. The only way I can go with the strength I have is if I don't focus on the results, I stay committed to my resolve. Because if I'm weak, and I thought I would be running at this moment, but I'm just scooting. I can't focus on the results right now. Because this is going to take a long time to walk back to my hotel like this. If this is all I got, it may take two years to get back to my room. But God says, stop and look where you came from. See, you can't focus on what you want that's up ahead. But you always can look back and see how far God has brought you. See, most of us, we're focusing on what we haven't done and where we're not yet and how much money we don't have. But God said, remember where you were a year ago. Remember where you were a month ago. And he said, if you can just remember where I brought you from, it'll give you enough to go with the strength you have. I feel this thing. And there's marriages right now that you've been, you've been about to give up. The divorce papers are in your nightstand right now. And you've been lied to. He's not going to change. She's not going to be. And God said, did you forget the resolve? Did you forget that commitment that you made before me and all your friends and family? He said, the problem is the results have become stronger than the resolve. Well, I'm leaving this church. They don't respect my gifting or my calling. I have more than this. No, God's trying to work something in your character. And you're about to leave the place that God's going to favor you in because you don't feel it. And God's saying, get back in that children's ministry. And no, you're not going to have an LED screen or new curriculum. But if you get in my presence, I'll give you something that hasn't been seen yet. If you would just allow me to down, go with the strength that you have. Well, if they would just see that I'm hurting and I'm broken and I just need a little time before I start. God said, your healing is going to happen as you go. There's so many people that are staying in a place waiting on their healing, but Jesus heals people in so many different ways and I'm always amazed at the people that he healed as they went. And God is saying to somebody that right now, the healing's going to come for your heart as you go with the strength that you have.
today I'm standing rich in the strength that I have. I don't have all the answers for what's happening in our country. I'm not politically correct. I don't, I don't know. But God said to me, he says, switch over from your feelings to your faith and go with the strength that you have. And tonight, I don't know if this made sense at all, but I feel better because I, <laughs> I'm getting healed as I go. If this wasn't for nobody else, I feel better than that because I'm standing in my calling right now. And even though there's things happening all around me, as I go with the strength that I have, God is healing me in this moment. And I don't know who else is in this chat and in this room and in this Zoom. There's a mother that was about to give up, but God's saying, get back in the ring, baby. I know you have a special needs child. I know this is hurting right now. I know you don't feel like you're beautiful, but God says, I've put enough in you. I call you a mighty warrior. I call you an amazing woman. Go with the strength that you have. I don't got time to go through the rest of this. But what ends up happening for Gideon is he still was conditioned to look at his situation more than the God who called him. He had what I call suggestions of sabotage. Judges 16, 15. But Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I'm the least in my entire family. I am weak, weak. See, the su suggestions of sabotage, they'll make you feel like you have to overestimate. Yep, yep. Look what he said. How can I rescue Israel? God didn't ask you to rescue him by yourself. So many times when God calls us to do something, we overestimate how much God asks us to do alone. It's a suggestion of sabotage. I can't rescue Israel. And then what he says, he starts comparing himself. This is a suggestion of sabotage. I'm trying to point it out so you can stop doing this in your life. We, he compared himself. I'm the weakest in the clan. And he said, I didn't ask you all that. Stop comparing your seed to somebody else's tree. Stop looking at what God planted you in and looking up, but I'm not. And God said, it doesn't matter. That's a suggestion of sabotage comparison. And then he undervalued himself. He said, and even though my clan is the weakest, I'm the weakest in the clan. <laughs> he undervalued right after God said, mighty hero. Right after God said, I'm going to do the business. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to take you to the... But, but I don't have the value. And many of us have to stop under evaluating what God has placed on the inside of us. We have to say, oh man, we have to agree with what God says about us. When those said there's power, when you agree with me, that's all God is trying to say. The church has to get in agreement with what God has already said about you. But we the weakest, we don't have enough. They won't listen. What if we, and God said, I didn't ask you all that. I need you to start saying statements of strength. 16, 16, the Lord says to him, I will be with you. He tells him again, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Hold up. So statements of stress or start stuff like this. And this is the stuff I need y'all to get gangster and start saying all over your situation. God's got me. He said, I'll be with you. Do you know how gangster you walk? Like when you know you got your boys with you and they can fight. Like, like I remember being by myself and going up against bullies. And then I remember being with all my brothers and going up against bullies. There's a different swag you have when you know somebody got your back. And too many Christians and believers are acting like they are begging God to have their back. And God says, I am with you. Somebody needs to get your swag back. And you need to walk up in an area and say, God's got me. God's got me, even though I don't have the money. God's got me. Even though I'm still single, God's got me. Even though I've never preached the message, God's 
got me. And then he said, you're going to destroy the Midianites. You need to say, I'm victorious. God's got me, but I'm victorious. Some of us are so used to losing that we're more comfortable losing than winning. And God is saying to you, will you agree with me? I got you and you're going to be victorious. Somebody say, God's got me. me. I'm victorious. Come on, yeah, that was weak. Say it with your chest. God's got me. God's got me. I'm victorious. I'm victorious. And then watch this is my favorite part. He says, and I'm so cold because I got your back. It's going to be like you defeat a whole army like it was one man. The biggest obstacle is going to fold like it was nothing. The thing that you should be saying, a statement of strength is I'm favored. You need to start walking into places. My wife will tell you everywhere we go. She's like, Michael, don't uh, come on. Calm down. Don't just calm down. But when I walk into places, God's got me. I'm victorious. I'm favored. Y'all got to upgrade in this hotel for free because I'm favored. The loan that you wouldn't give to nobody else. Give it to me because I'm favored. Y'all think I'm playing with y'all right now. Everywhere that I go, I don't come in weakness. I stand in statements of strength, not on my own strength, but I got somebody that's backing me. And God's got me. I'm victorious and I'm favored. Gideon goes on to be challenged several more times because God was trying to make a point. He said, if I'm for you, who can be against you? 22,000 people in the army. He said, too many. If I'm Gideon at that moment, I'm like, God done lost his mind. Just when I got enough confidence to walk around, I'm like, God's got me. I'm victorious. I'm favored. I got 22,000. Let's go do it. He said, too many. Sometimes the subtraction is for God's glory. Some of the people and the things that you've lost have been for God's glory. (laughs) Some some of the things, the the, the things that you thought were going to make 2020, he took away. Some of the plans, the engagements, the concerts, the tour dates, the trips. He took them away for his glory. He took 22,000 down to 300 because God was about to prove a point. And this is how come I can stand here and say that it's a new normal, but we serve the same God. Because he goes with 300 gangsters, untrained. They just drank water the right way. You can read this. You got to read this story. Please read your Bible. All they did was drink water the right way. And he goes in and defeats an entire nation with 300 people because they stood knowing that God's got me. I'm victorious and I'm favored. No matter what you're feeling right now, ah, you got to agree with God. Your resolve has to be stronger than the results. I imagine when, when 22,700 or 21,700 people went back home, Gideon said, it's over. I obey God up to this point, but I'm about to die. And God was about to perform a miracle that we could stand here in 2020 and say, hold up. I know all of these things are coming against us as a church, as a society, but I can stand boldly in this moment and say, yeah, It's a new normal, but it's the same God. And I want you to know that no matter what you're facing, this is not new to God. He's still got you. He's got your family, and we have to agree with them. Somebody give God a shout of praise in this place if you believe it. I want to pray with you. If Doe and the worship team will come, that song, we're going to agree with God now. (laughs) We're going to stop agreeing with our situation and we're gonna go with the strength you have i feel so much better I, no 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 i'm like there's a real moment right now i feel so much better because i went with the strength that i had 
<laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm ready to do something else. I feel like I'm ready to answer my call at another level. I feel like God's just getting started with me. I feel like God's raised me up for such a time as this. I feel, I'm feeling more strength coming because I'm going with the strength that I have. And today, if you felt weak in any area, whether it's from your home life to your marriage, to your business, to your self-esteem, insecurities, I'm going to pray today that tonight in the presence of God, you would get a resolve. A resolve that will outlast how you feel. A resolve that's going to, to anchor you in the middle of the storm. Yeah, the church may be closed for another eight months. I don't know. But do we have a resolve to still serve God? Do we have a resolve to still reach out to our neighbor and love people? Do we have a resolve? If you're weak in any area, if you feel like Gideon, that you've been down in there and you're trying to accept what God has said about you, he's calling you a mighty hero. He's calling you a woman of valor or a man of valor or a woman that is, is victorious. If you're in that moment right now and you need the strength that you have, you need that strength to be recognized so you can go with it. I want you to lift your hands up all over this place, all over the room, all over the Zoom. I'm about to pray with you and at the end of this prayer they're going to begin to sing amen and they're going to begin to prophetically declare I agree with God no matter if it doesn't feel like it right now I agree with God there's hands up all over this place on YouTube live lift your hands there's pastors there's CEOs there's there's a cab drivers and uber drivers everybody's in here and we're all saying God we need you father in the name of Jesus I pray for every person that is on this zoom right now that is watching back on rebroadcast that is listening right now and I declare and I believe that you are doing something on the inside of us that is going to be a resolve that is greater than the results. Father, I thank you that today, my brothers and sisters are gonna move in faith, not just feelings, God. I declare and I believe, Father God, that you are putting something on the inside of them that lets them know, oh God, that you have called them for such a time as this. These are gonna be leaders that do not shrink back, that do not go backwards, but that look at where you brought us from and look forward to where you're taking us to. God, we we will make the decision to go with the strength we have. We will be that mother. We will be that father. We will be that business owner. We will be that friend. We will be that teacher. And we will agree with you. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We will agree with what God says. We say amen. We lift up our voice. We agree with God. Somebody say it.
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We new normal, you, same God. God. New normal, same God. Yeah. This is the new normal. We up in a room with about 30 of us jumping around on an LED screen, singing this song with everything we got, looking at faces, thousands of people in Zoom rooms. Thank you, Lord. That's the new normal, but let me just remind you, it's the same God. Same God. He's still working today. He's the same God yeah, yeah, yesterday, yeah. today, and forever. And you go on the strength that you have. I just feel led. Here's why I feel led. We got pastors in this room. We got leaders in this room. We're, we're going to do some ministry tonight for a moment. And my friend Chris Durso's here. I'm going to ask Chris that you'll come and speak. And I, I want us right here. These guys, all, all our pastors, our leaders, let's get on these TVs right now. Let's get some cameras. Let's start laying our hands on this TV yeah. and start calling out names. I see Rodrigo over there. I see Kiera. I see you, Gia. I see Tommy. We're I see so many Brittany, names. What, us, what I want us Queen. to do. Is Doe, I want Sonia, us to sing that Dallas. favor over families. And, we pray and Chris, George, I want us to pray right now that blessings would come God. upon generations, that people tonight pray that are feeling God. weak, that they would we'll sense the over. grace of God, the strength we of God. We're we'll going to sing this strength. song yeah, over them. But Chris Father. is going to come. Come on, get the cameras on the people. We're praying for people now. You're not in the room, but you're in the Zoom. We're praying for you. Andrea Jackson, I see you right now. We're praying for you. Amy Warner, we're praying for you right now. This is your season. This is your year. Rudy, this is your year, brother. Ronaldo, come on. This is not an accident that you're in the Zoom tonight. It's a new normal. It's the same God. Every name. Come on. Come on, Chris, begin to pray. God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, and we declare your blood over every child, over every person, over everyone that is hiding in their room right now. For your spirit says, rise up, mighty warrior, and I declare and I decree peace over their lives right now. I declare and I decree favor over their lives right now, that they would wake up and they would understand greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world we thank you that you allow us to stand in your spirit we thank you that you allow us to stand in your favor for the mother that is overwhelmed right now for the mother the single mother that is overwhelmed with only a few dollars in the bank account i pray that you would send her the miracle on tonight to remind her that you are always good and the same way you met her the last time you're gonna meet her again and her assignment doesn't change because because the God of her life does not change. I pray right now for everyone that is overwhelmed by life, for the one that feels stuck, that they would have a release right now, that freedom would be there right now in the name of Jesus. For the one that is angry because of the racism and the hurt, I pray, oh God, that you would heal their hearts and you would give them eyes to see and they would stand right now and they would understand that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with me. And if I just go in the name of Jesus, then I have everything that I need. Because in the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. In the name of Jesus, the blind can see. In the name of Jesus, justice happens. In the name of Jesus, we see life. In the name of Jesus, I know what 2020 looks like, but my 2020 is about to get better. It's necessarily because it's going to change but my outlook is going to change the scales are falling off right now the strength is coming back up you're going to begin to worship again we're going to lift up our hands again we're going to prophesy again and we are going to say these dry bones can get up right now in the name of jesus if you believe that and receive that i dare you wherever you are to lift up your hands open up your mouth and shout the name of jesus in your place right now. Hey! Mm. Mm. here's what i want us to do here's what i want us to do don Sheree, can you come this is a new normal but the same god come on and this is a conference that we want to mobilize you to go into the night. This is not about a stage anymore. This is about the, hey, this is about people getting into the world, being the hands and feet of Jesus. And I want Don Shree to pray over people in the Zoom. And here's what I want you guys to do in the back. Guys, 
I want you to take the spotlight in the camera off of everything on the stage. And I want you to put up for every three seconds a different face while Don Cherie prays. You start scrolling through this Zoom. You start seeing people who are being touched by God. And I want to put the spotlight today on the people because the church has never been about a place. The church has always been about a yes, people. Sir. And I'm telling you, there's difficult moments right now, but there has never been a better moment for leaders to rise up, to lift up their voice, to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. So come on, guys in the back, just start, just start showing us faces. Just start, just start spotlighting faces. Help me out, Oliver. Start spotlighting faces, Greg. Put it right now. Yep. But, but give, me, give me individual faces, just go one by one. And I want Don Shree to pray over people. We'll keep praying. Give me individual people, guys, individual people. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, we outstretch our arms, Lord, towards sons and daughters of Almighty God. Yeah. Lord, you yes. see their faces, you know their thoughts yes. before they reach their tongue. You know the needs in their life, Lord. You know the sorrow. You know the grief that they're walking through today, God. You know the physical infirmities in their body. And Lord, right now, I pray for every single one of them, God. I pray for for you. Lord, I pray for every single life. Lord, right now, I pray pray that they would go in the strength that they have. Lord, that they would know that what you place inside of them is enough for them to move forward. And God, as they obey and as they trust you, you will meet them as they step out. Lord, that your Holy Spirit will empower them to speak. That your Holy Spirit will empower them to stand. And oh God, today with their hands lifted at their dining room table, on their couches, as they kneel in their living room, God, as they sit with their families at their desk, God, as tears stream down their face and as they cry out to you, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they would know that all the eyes of heaven are upon them tonight, that they are loved, that they are seen. God, I pray the miracles would break out in their living room tonight. God, I pray that bodies would be healed by the name of Jesus. God, that where there was pain, there will be healing. Where there was brokenness, there will be wholeness. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that they would sense your presence within them, all around them, before them, and behind them. And God, I pray right now that the whispers of the Holy Spirit deep within their spirit, God, would resound not just in this moment, but God, what you speak to them tonight that they will carry for the rest of their life. God, that you will establish something. God, that you will speak to their situation, but God, deeper than their situation, God, you would establish something in their soul from this moment forward. And God, that they wouldn't waver, they wouldn't be tossed to and fro like the waves, but God, they would be able to walk on a sure foundation that is you. You are the rock. We stand on you. We don't stand on what culture says. We don't stand on what the news says. We don't stand on what the doctor's report says. But oh God, we have a firm foundation in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, right where we are in our living room, we claim healing. Right now, we claim deliverance. Right now, we claim wisdom to walk forward as a son of God, as a daughter of God. It is done because you said it is finished, We see you, James. Right now, we look to you. God, you're our hope. You're our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. I asked Doe, I just want Doe, keep flashing the faces, keep flashing the faces. Doe's gonna sing and then we're gonna go into this song together and we're gonna go out of here victorious like Mike's been preaching. But Doe, I just want you to open up this place for a moment. Let's just begin to sing over these people right now. Let's just begin to worship and sing. Come on. Hey, and if God be for you, then who can be against you? I said if God be for you, then no man can be against you. No pandemic, That's no for you, situation you need to know God That's is you, for God you. Peter. He's for you. Yeah. You need to change your mind about your situation. You That's need to you, change Christine. your direction of your vision. You need to gaze on him. Look to him. Look to the hills from which coming your help. I said if God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, yeah. who can be against you? If God be for you.
when you agree with him it's time for you to believe there's power when you agree with him i said there's power when you agree with him come on yes there's peace when you agree yeah, with yeah, him yeah. i said there's strength when you agree with him he will fill you when you agree with him come on, he's with you just agree with him he is for you just agree with him yes there's power when you agree with him yes there's power now lift your hands and sing all men say Then who could ever Bless stop God. us? And if our God Come is on. with us, then why? 